<laughs> Hello, welcome back. Uh, we were trying to figure out, I mean, 37 flavors is an astonishing amount of flavors to put yeah, in, in frozen <laughs> drinks. And I, I challenged the producer during the break to name merely 20 flavors, and he couldn't name nine. So I don't know what the remaining, uh, what is it, 28 flavors are. Uh, or 29 flavors, but uh, but there's a lot of them. I'm okay, not the cool. one to ask with that either. I'm a like when it comes to flavors, I'm the most simple man. Like I will have vanilla if it's a flavor available for everything. Here, here's here's what I suggest: uh, McDonald's bring in all the flavors, and I will taste test everyone, and I will rank them. That would be that that I mean that that's a seg. That's content. That's a seg. Yeah. That's just content. Uh, all right. Uh, speaking of content. Skimmy's mixed metaphors aside, <laughs> uh, how, how are you feeling about Game 3? I was feeling optimistic about PGG going into that. The optimism quickly uh, disappeared like the burn of a hot tongue under some cool skim yogurt. Well, I was trying to think of how to explain that game nicely and the conclusion that I came to is Pentanet were like toilet paper this last week. I just can't find them anywhere. And like it was, they just didn't exist this week, right? Like they came in the week before, they were taking it to the best teams, and that was a very different pentanet this week again. Yeah, so, right. Very different from them. Yeah, right. Uh, I could have taken that in a different place, and I won't you because I, I feel fondly for pe uh, for pentanet.gg. All right, it's time to jump into the third seg of the day. You asked for it. It's coming back. It's an echidna. It's an echidna. Uh, it's an echidna, of course, the segment where I uh, basically riff off its academic title sequence, that is, and I just, uh, I give you some clues. You need to guess what animal it is. Make sense? Let's get rid of this coin. No, let's get rid of this coin. It's also the segment where none of us got it. It was, it was really you got, hard. You got one, didn't you? Spawn got one. Maybe you got one. And yeah, that was on, like, clue three. Yeah. I mean, that, here's the thing. It it's, not, it's not interesting if it's just very obvious clues, because it's stuff everyone knows about that animal, right? That's the dilemma. Yeah. It needs to be weird facts. Yeah, and yeah. I, I like these facts. That was the thing. Like, they were good facts. They're good facts. But I just couldn't answer. Like, it was a challenge we weren't winning. Let's see how we go with this one. All right. Now it's just me. Animal number one. I know, it's so unfair. <laughs> we got to figure this out. Uh, animal number one. I live literally everywhere from the deepest ocean trenches to deserts. Snakes. No, but you're closer than you think. I was the inspiration for Cupid. Cupid being the little fat Valentine kid with the arrow. Yeah. Bow and arrow guy. Yeah. Little pearl. An animal that is an inspiration for Cupid. Mm-hmm. 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 what is it because of the arrow? Yeah. It's because of the arrow? Yeah. And snakes was close. Snakes is close. It's because of the arrow. Don't get caught on the arrow though, because I don't have an arrow. Yeah. I can be turned into a musical instrument, and my mucus inspired medical adhesives. Is this like conch shell? It like, could be. I don't know what animals live. It could be. Lobster thingies. What are they called? <laughs> It's not that. It's not a lobster. It's not a lobster. No, Lobsters it's not a don't lobster. carry around conch shells. You don't go to a <laughs> fine seafood restaurant, get a pair of pliers, and crack open a Cupid conch shell. Cupid doesn't have six hands? That's true. I, actually, I don't know what they are. I can sleep for three years. There you go. Those are all your clues. Those are all your clues. My, so, when you said the bow and arrow thing, or like the Cupid relation, my first thought was one of those uh, like stonefish. Oh, interesting choice. Because like that yeah. is effectively like a barb is yep. its yep. weapon. Yeah. No. But that's as close as I got. And then I thought of like ocarinas and shells yep. as instruments, and I don't know what animals go in them anymore. Okay, what animal goes in a shell? I don't know. There's literally like a, the one name, animal. Yeah, but the name, I'm missing the name. No, it's very, okay. <laughs> snails. <laughs> <laughs> so, snails. Some snails shoot quote-unquote love darts at what? the object of their affections that contain mucus that increases the chance of their sperm surviving. 
because snails are hermaphrodites and both individuals receive sperm during mating. Okay. There you go. What do you think about that? That's what unusual. What do you think about that? <laughs> what do you think about that in the esports broadcast? I think it's unusual. <laughs> All right. And I have no other comments, Your Animal Honor. Animal number two. God, I love this game. <laughs> I am the only animal who can't jump. This feels like a dubious fact as well, but I'm going to take it on face value. Only animal that can't jump. Odd. I can already think of one that can't. When the male of my species produces must, must. it can increase its levels of testosterone by a factor of 60. Is it giving it away if we discuss the size of this animal? No. Like, is it a big or a small one? Well, I think the next clue will help. Okay. I create literally a ton of poop a week. That's big. Is it a hippo? Oh, you're so close. Rhino. Oh, you're getting further away. Ah. And not only do I create a lot of poop, I also create my own sunscreen using mud and sand. Okay, so big. Yep. Lots of poo. Yeah. Lots of poo. Lots of poo. Can't jump. Yep. And what was and, and sunscreen? That's. Uh, yeah, using mud and sand. And then there's the must thing. <laughs> yeah, and I just don't know what must yeah. is, so I ignore <laughs> it. the must one. Um, That's a big animal. Well, I wanted to say something, and it's probably just completely wrong now, but like crocodiles or something. No, bigger. Think bigger. Like way big, like a blue whale. Think smaller. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a less big whale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can 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 fish jump? I, Is yes. it jumping there's, if you're never technically on the ground? There's flying fish. Yeah. So like, do they jump because they they berth out of the water and back in? That's true. But do you have to be on the ground to jump? So it's a aquatic animal. Yeah. No. No. Do you want to know? Yeah. Mud I mean, and sand. Mud and an sand. It's an elephant. Elephant? It's an elephant. Wait, did I? Oh, I didn't say elephant. You didn't. You said, Wait, you said hippo. Oh. And I was like, you're close. And then you went to rhino. And it's like, that's But how's that further off? Um, because a rhino, you're, like a hippo is like a small elephant. A rhino, we're heading more towards like, uh, like a triceratops. But like a land. Yeah, hippo. as soon as you were caught, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know, just in my head, you were getting... Elephant, <laughs> elephant was the next guess for me. No! And then you <laughs> and said I further said, away. And I was like, no, nah, you're getting too <laughs> far. Oh, smaller. <clears throat> okay, here we go. One more. Okay. The male of my species checks to see if the female is fertile. Oh, God. By tasting her urine. Well, that doesn't help me a bit. Uh, that's also just very gross. It <laughs> is, of course, the human. Um... <laughs> I can only sleep 10 minutes a day. Oh, uh, so I can sleep only 10 minutes a day and I don't lie down. Shark. No. Again, can you lie down if you're floating? Is that lying down? Oh, uh, that's... Julius Caesar once got given one of my kind as a gift, named it a camel leopard, showed it off at the streets of Rome and then fed it to his <laughs> lions. <laughs> Camel leopard. Yeah, what would you... Camel... Camel so, leopard. So camel? It has humps and patterns. Is that... You got half of that, right? It has patterns. Yep. <laughs> camel? Leopard. What is a camel? The final quote. Meerkat. <gasps> Why would it be... Okay. No. Oh, damn. Meerkats, I imagine, sleep a lot. I and don't can know. definitely lie down. Actually, no, I did watch me a cat mano growing up. Yeah, right. They, yeah, they sleep. Final clue. My tongue is sunproof. <laughs> Anteater. No, but that's a good guess. <sighs> that's a good guess. That's it's also, good like, guess. I had the leopard feel for me as well, maybe. I don't know. So, camel, leopard. Yeah, yeah. Leopard, camel. Yeah, I've, I've, you've tongue. said those words a lot. Sunproof tongue. Chat's finally catching up to the first one as well. Julius Caesar. It is, of course. Is he an idiot? <laughs> or did it resemble a camel leopard? It does. It's a, no, it's a good description. Okay. When you, when, like, remove the hump and you're there. It's like a horse. Like a, a pony. So close. You're so close. You're so close. Just stretch it a little bit. A stretch, like a giraffe. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. You got it. It's a giraffe. There you go. Look at that sunproof tongue. You managed to pick a lot of facts that I had no idea would be related to a giraffe. That's the point. 
And yeah. giraffes are obvious creatures. It is. So you did very well. Thank you very much. Well, I didn't do well. well Mother whoever, Nature did very well. chose them. Uh, congratulations to everybody uh, who is currently still playing It's an Echidna. It's an OPL favourite. Uh, we'll see you next time for It's an Echidna. Do giraffes have patterns? Yeah. Like, is that where the leopard... Like, I don't... Yeah, yeah. Giraffes have, like, brown and orange. Okay. And no two giraffe has the same pattern. Ooh. It's like a snowflake. Ooh. There you go. That's cool. Ruminate on that. Uh, all right, it's time to get into something else while we ruminate on giraffes. It is Gravitas versus Mammoth. It's the final game for the day. Uh, the Gravitas lineup, please. Uh, Rusty. Yeah, there's changes in Gravitas's lineup today. It'll be Beats in the top lane, not nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, Prelist, still your starting jungle. Human mid, Belong at one as the AD carrier, and Trashley as there the you support. Go. So a lot of changes coming in today for Gravitas. Uh, they've got like 47 members. How many coaches do they have? They like have Omo two. Get, they have two. Get, yeah, right, there but you only, go. Yeah, only one here, only I one. believe. Yeah, well, here. Look, me, me. Um, uh, okay, cool, Gravitas. Uh, new lineup. This is a, this is a uh, synergy we've not seen yet in the OPL, so excited to see how that goes. They are, of course, taking on Mammoth. Mammoth, Rusty. We have Maui in the top lane. Uh, Bass in jungle. Lived is your mid lane. And Emboma and Artek as your bottom lane, who I would say played pretty, pretty well yesterday. Yep. It's obviously, a lot of the games yesterday were hard wins or hard losses for each respective team that played. Mm -hmm. but Saw some promise coming out of that bottom lane, and now they're up against a, a different bottom lane as well themselves. Indeed, and good to see uh, Quaku back for um, round uh, for day two of uh, weekend. Let's jump into it. Let's not wait any longer. It is Gravitas Ma versus Mammoth, and it is coming up with the Macca's Champ Select. <laughs> It's the final game of the day, and it could not be a better banger. Gravitas taking on Mammoth. Pride is on the line here, Carvin. They are fighting to get out of the Gulag that is eighth spot and get themselves <laughs> into seventh. There's Pride on the line here. Uh, absolutely. Um, I said it earlier, you know, seventh isn't great, yeah. but it's a lot better than eighth. Definitely is, and uh, you know, there's not a lot of love lost between these two teams. They've definitely showcased that they have a lot of flexibility in their roster, as we saw. Both Rusty and uh, Nick could go over beforehand. Do you think there's an obvious favourite with these changes in mind? Between these two teams? Or between the, the different players in the roster? Well, I suppose just from your, your experience of, uh, you know, noticing these changes and not leaking too much really from scrims, but just your own personal take. What is your, what is your take on these uh, players and how they sort of influence? I don't know. I don't know that the players are chosen on form. I'm you trying know? to understand really what the, the idea is between yeah, Gravitas, Yeah, it seems right? to me that they sort of switch players arbitrarily. Like, uh, it's rare, you know, that we see certain... Because sometimes we see the players play well and not play the next game. Yeah. Or they play well one weekend and then the next week it's another player. So it might be something to do with, like, uh, availabilities or... Um, sure, I'm not okay. sure because, yeah, Gravitas is the only team that don't have a uh, gaming house. So I imagine, you know, they've got a lot of things going on in their own lives, perhaps. Sure, sure. Um, but, uh, no, I'm not sure. And uh, I know that, uh, for me, yeah, I, I really liked Mboma and Artek. I thought on the Mammoth side that they played quite well sure. yesterday. And uh, it is good to see Kweku back as well. Um, I think Kweku uh, has some promise as a top laner. Yeah. Um, so I have to see what happens this game. It looks like Gravitas either didn't ban or perhaps they lost a ban. Um, because they've... That's an empty slot. It's an empty ban. That looks like my solo queue games. So either they were too late to lobby, or uh, they've got some sort of 200 IQ super draft Wouldn't that going be the biggest on. disrespect, eh? We don't even need to ban champions away. Sometimes on blue side, it does make sense, because you only have one first pick. Uh, so sometimes it makes sense that you want to leave as many OPs open as you can. Would you so not just throw away a ban on a Teemo? Um... 
I don't know. It's a good question. I guess, yeah, you, just, you know, there's full, no loss. Full, full disrespect. Just leave yeah, it blank. Yeah. I guess that's true. You could throw it on a Teemo or something. It's always something to ban. Well, they, go for the, uh, they go for the first pick on Rennington. The response from Mammoth is, let's pick up those OPs, as you highlight. Aphelios and Set. We've seen it already today. Coming out of uh, many teams. A lot of priority on the Echo the last two days. A lot of players very keen on playing the Echo mid. Yeah. Uh, Suman did have his Akali and his LeBlanc both banned out. Which is fair enough. He's very good at both those champions. Um, but I don't feel like... Well, then again, actually, Lived also played Echo. So I guess they're sort of taking it out of Lived's hands. But I don't really see Echo as that strong right now. It's always been a pick that I think even from the very first time Prelis busted out said, look, we're going up against Mammoth. They're a very solo queue eccentric team. I feel like I can get away with it, right? And definitely when he has been able to get online, it has been incredibly strong. Um, what's interesting for me is they've kind of shown away their solo lanes already in these first three picks. Um, yes, I know you can obviously flex the Lucian in multiple different roles, but yep. it doesn't seem as if it's going to be a Lucian AD carry anytime soon. Unless Belong One has been practicing it, we have have seen Katsuri play it, so it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah, I mean, Lucian bot isn't horrible. Um, it could be Lucian mid, but it's definitely a counter pick. You know, Lucian blind pick mid is not, you know, it's not super strong. Sure. Um, Renekton can be flex mid as well. Yep. Um, but for me, the big one is the Echo, right? To me, it's it's quite obvious that the Echo is going... Well, actually, Payless does play jungle echo and he he likes to play carry champions he's been playing carry champions Correct, recently yeah. we saw the the hecarim uh yesterday um so it wouldn't surprise me to see the echo go into the jungle um but i feel like gravitas right now a lot of flexibility in that draft so hard to take too much uh out of that um also with them banning supports yeah it's uh it's only gonna get worse right with Tarek now being taken off the board as well fresh too so yeah but so neither team, shields, ult, regression, everything, right? Neither team has committed to a support already. No. You know what I mean? So they're both sort of pinching the support pool, but they both need to take one. So the point I was trying to make is that it's not really uh, teaching us much about the Gravitas no. flex. Um, if they're just pinching the support pool. Definitely keeping Mammoth still guessing is what we're getting at, right? Um, what have we still got online? Obviously, Leona is still available there. Rakan, Brom. Yeah, there are still plenty of supports we available. We start working into Enchanter territory. Yeah, it's more about... Do you have a priority support that you want to take away? Yep. Or do you want to pinch the pool and then counter pick with some obscure, you know, you let the other guy pick Braum and then you play Zyra or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, but uh, they've blind picked the Braum. They didn't, yeah. After all those support bans, they're going to actually just lock yeah. in. Not even going to leave it to last. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Counter pick Bard is, is quite good into Braum. Uh, you know, blind pick Braum is sort of like a, this is what we're going to do. You can pick whatever you like and, let, you know, let's see what you have. Uh, for me, Blitzcrank is not a very good counter at all. Okay. Uh, because if you hook the AD carry, Braum jumps to the AD carry, puts the shield up straight away, ults, you know, he's very good at peeling. That's the sort of scenario Braum excels in. And if you hook the Braum, well, I mean, it's exactly the over. same. It's just, you know, wall up and he jumps backwards. You can't kill him. So, I'm not sure about the Blitzcrank, but... Uh, Syndra's locked in. Yeah. Um, once again, Syndra can be flex bot lane, can go mid. So, there's still a lot of flexibility to... Keep Mammoth guessing for this final flex. Yeah, I mean, for me, at this stage, you know, Echo Jungle is... Uh, That's a guarantee. I think it's it's Echo Jungle, Syndra mid, Lucian bot. I don't think we're going to see anything too crazy okay. here. Um, I thought it was just... Uh, the only thing that really spun me was, well, you know, Echo, I assume he's going mid because I just saw him mid last game, and I saw him mid yesterday. Um, but uh, Echo Jungle, we don't see much of it anymore. Uh, it is quite strong, especially if you get rolling, but uh, it does need a little bit of time to ramp, and... I mean, Prelis, you know, we've been seeing his praises the last little while, but he didn't have a great game yesterday, and Echo is definitely a, a snowball champion. Dark Harvest is the uh, the rune of choice at the moment for Echo. Okay. But that, that's also, you know, very heavily reliant on being able to execute kills. Finding that value in those execution targets. Yeah. Wants to try and forget about the Hecarim performance and put that in his... Uh very distant mind and really get the ball rolling with a pick that he was able to bring to Mammoth last time they faced up against each other and uh, give them something to weep upon. But you look at these two different drafts, you mentioned obviously the bot lane being an interesting one with the Braum to go up against what is going to be the Lucian and Blitzcrank, but is there any other lane that really stands out apart from the jungle? Uh, not really. I think Renekton is supposed to beat Set early, but Set is also just, 
in a very strong position right now. Just a very strong champion. Obviously yeah. has that engage. Um, I like the synergy between Set and Orianna. Mm -hmm. um, Orianna, I don't think, is supposed to do too hot into this lane, but if he can survive the lane phase, will be very relevant in team fights, of course. Uh, Philios, just really, really strong. Um, still strong. Even now, he's, I think he's been nerfed a few times, uh, but still, you know, insanely strong. And then Braum is sort of that uh, classic team fighting carry, uh, support rather. Yep. He's been a stalwart pick he could in be Oceania. Uh, you know, people have been picking Braum since the very beginning of the Oceanic server. He's just one of those guys who excels in scrappy games, which is often what we see. And then uh, Elise Echo is uh, early. It's Elise favored, but once Echo gets rolling, it's uh, very difficult for Elise to ever do anything. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. I feel like Mammoth definitely opting into that team fight, whereas Gravitas are going more the direwolf route of uh, win lane, win game. Definitely seems to Ray be that could way. be in trouble here. He definitely could be. There's already a ward down. The face breaker that's comes it. on out because that's a flash by set, and that's a first blood onto your AD carry. The dream start here for Emboma. Yeah, you take that for sure. Uh, Gra uh, Mammoth rather obviously have done their research. We're expecting Prelus to uh, to walk up the ramp there, and they were rewarded for their hard work. It's interesting, right? Because Mammoth, typically speaking, only from these games they have found so far, have only managed to get first blood 33% of the time. So it's Usually been them falling down in those solo kills and lanes. But this time, they are the ones to do their homework and catch Prelus out. An extra long sword and uh, one more pot in the bot lane is nothing to be mad about. Have to see whether or not Mboma can make it work for him. But uh, no flash on the set does make him a target early. Yep. You know, Renekton, very easy uh, to, to close that gap with the slice and dice. And, uh, and the W, so we'll see whether or not Prelus makes his way up there early. Well, 500 gold dispersed amongst the team. Primarily there. Onto the Aphilios, which already has such an insanely strong laning phase. Especially when he has that sniper weapon online, going to be able to keep this Lucian at bay. Yes, looks like uh, full clear coming through for Prelus. So no early top lane visits, I don't think, are on the cards. Bass is uh, he's gone from red to blue, so probably going to finish off that Grump afterwards and might be looking at an early bot lane gank. Maybe as indeed. Kweku has put the hurt onto Beats. Didn't see what happened, but Beats is already a pot down and also forced to recall. Probably just didn't respect the level two and it's not a good start to the lane. Isn't ideal by any stretch of imagination. We'll have the teleport to get back to lane to make sure that he's not going to miss anything as it falls down and crashes into the tower. Prelus spotted on raids. So Bass will have a good idea now of what's happening. He would have seen that he had two camps finished already and he's working on his third, so he knows that he's done the golems. And expect that full clear. Is parving towards top side right now, so we'll still have a window to potentially capitalize on the fact that Quaku doesn't have that flash. Uh, but it's just, uh, it's going to be too little too late, I think. I mean, besides the fact that Beats got sent home early, uh, you know, it's, it's not. It's going to be another 30 seconds before he's uh, he's ready to gank, and by that stage, I think Bass will be back on the top side. He knows that Queku is winning this lane, pushing in hard, so he wants to uh, sort of bridge that uh, flashless period. Yeah. For the set, make sure that he can continue to win this lane without too much jungle interference. I think we might see a crab contest here as Bass throws the. Uh, it's going to be an exchange really here. Vision plant isn't it? out. Yeah. Like he's giving that one up. Doesn't have a top laner in lane. I think Lyft was getting shoved in as well, so does the uh, discipline thing. Allows Prelos to finish that crab, but it does mean that uh, Kweku's got to be careful here. Yeah, going to be the gentleman's agreement as they both uh, go for the scuttles, top and bot side. Mid and top were held roughly in the middle, so neither laner's wishing to uh, forsake that for the wave management. Lived training pretty aggressively. Sweetman is uh, almost out of mana, and Lived has the TP. So this uh, this lane going very well for the uh, Mammoth mid laner at the moment. Bass is standing on a ward. Gravitas doing their best to keep him interested without moving too far forwards. Is interesting. Note where the wards are right now. One and try. One very close over the wall to spot out any potential flank. It's going to catch him now. I mean, the high level thing here for Gravitas bot lane to do is just to continue farming outside their turret as we get a dive in the top lane. But uh, Kweku says, bring it on. I got a one-two for you. 
incredibly hard to try and dive a set, especially as two melee champions as well. Yep. Finally reduce the aggression, saying, look, we're going to punish you for hanging around in this bot lane for so damn long. Heal, no. One final bullet will do it. It will respond in the flash, having to be used by this Lucian, but the summoner heal to try and counteract out this ignite wasn't enough. And we see ganks fail on both sides of the map at the same time. Echo goes top, uh, tries to dive, nothing doing. Bass was standing on wards for minutes. Most of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Most of this game so far, he was standing on these wards. And yeah, eventually, Gravitas get fed up and they say, hey, if you're just going to stand here, we are going to kill you. Has to bend that the repel, uh, super repel early. so early. And uh, yeah, heal, not enough. But Long One manages to uh, close the gap with the relentless pursuit there anyway. Yep. Trash is going to go home. Nope. Just channeling the recall for fun. We don't want to see the Lucian die, right? As cybernetic fans that we are, be it TFT <laughs> gamers, Lucian needs to be fed, right? He needs to get that static shiver online, become two star, just really carry the team. Yes, that is very important. Of course, that isn't the cybernetic Lucian. The cybernetic Lucian is the project Lucian. Because that's the thing. As they change the sets, the same character, you know, they're, they're different people. Yeah. The skins take on different personas. Whereas in the game League of Legends, doesn't matter what skin you have, you're the same guy. Skins do get wins. It's kind of like C's get degrees, even though that is a very terrible analogy to compare to. But regardless, Mammoth will find their opportunity to crash that wave in with Gravitas having gone for a reset. A bit of an awkward timing. That means they can freely rotate over and go for the very first Drake. Yeah, it's been a... Uh, it's not been a great uh, Elise game for Bass so far. Um, wasn't able to uh, impact the map early with any ganks, really. Yep. Uh, has now spent some time doing the dragon as well. And at a surface level, you know, taking the dragon, always a good thing. Um, you, you know, you think, well, at least he's an early game champion and he's using that early game to secure objectives. But at least his early game is really centered around, you know, stacking those waves and diving or, or for forcing a skirmish in the river where you can cocoon the enemy jungler, get your, your mid laner those double buffs. Yeah. Taking the time to do the dragon just allows Praelus to farm for longer without having to worry about his lanes falling particularly behind. By the time that Dragon Soul is really on the table, Praelus is going to be so much stronger than Bass oh, as that hook lands. That's the max range hook. Burns at the flash, followed up here by the stun. And without having the ignite, the Sindra will not be able to get that execute, but it does utilize a fair bit of pressure. Monster hook there from uh, Trashley. Didn't burn any sums on the sides of Gravitas, so yes, ultimate down, but uh, will be up relatively quickly in comparison to that flash at least. Lived, lucky to, wait, uh, lucky to get away with his life. Now this is interesting because Mammoth have already flipped this map. They're gonna Trashley could be in trouble here. Be in position to really try and capitalize on Trashley, but I think a support v support matchup is not anything we want to see. Support all combat, certainly not between uh, Blitzcrank and Braum. Shaman Boma moved away when he did. He didn't want to move, lose any more CS, but uh, there was definitely an opportunity for a pick there if there were more people in that brush. Nothing doing, though, so just going to reset to neutral. I believe Echo was able to successfully steal away the blue buff, too, and will have his own one spawning up very shortly as he's pathing towards topside, so a huge victory for him to continue that lead you were highlighting before. Oh, absolutely. And this is the point of the game where it gets very difficult for Bass. He doesn't have any obvious gank opportunities anymore. He never went mid, so Sui Min has had that cleanse the entire time. Uh, and Praelus now is at a stage where he's clearing camps fast enough that he can accelerate this gold lead. And yeah. now Sintra has blue buff too, so and here's the, the lane is just insane. Very quickly before this team fight starts, here's the problem, is he's trying to force another objective using his early Elise pressure, but because he doesn't have any lane advantage for ganks, he's probably going to lose this fight. We're going to see how this one goes out, as the hook just lands from without a flash, that makes it quite disastrous. Glacial Fisher goes out, but Prelis is the first one to find the kill. Bass will survive for the meantime, who's going to pick this one up as the shockwave connects on only one member? Gravitas have the angle, Beats will look for the flash hack dash. And he comes in with the scissor. He collapses. He destroys. Waku? And he executes. Only one kill here is found by Q as he goes for the slam dunk. But with four members of the gravy train choo chewing on down, they are looking for the four man collapse. But set, not an easy target to take down. And that's it. I mean, uh, saw the writing on the wall. It's exactly the same as that dragon, you know? Uh, Echo. He's just so strong in comparison to the Elise, and Bass feels like he has to get something done. Yeah. But, uh, you know, with Elise, you really need that early game lead, and 
Yeah, they had the turret set up, but Trashley just lands that hook yet again. And I mean, it never really looked like Mammoth were doing do anything in this fight. Exhaust even going on to Blitzcrank. Yeah, I mean, Beast just comes over the wall here. They didn't have a ward. They had no idea. They were stuck in the back of the pit and manages to just slice and dice all over the back line. And, you know, yes, Set is pretty good when he's outnumbered, but uh, <laughs> not like this. Not like that at all. It's a quad kill, all things said and done, in exchange for a Rift Herald. Gravitar definitely find the better exchange when it came to gold and efficiency. Yep. Gold lead, only 1k though. And uh, Rift Herald could still be dropped. You know, it's still three and a half minutes before platings uh, disappear. So, you know, there is opportunity here for Mammoth to, uh, to, to even up that gold lead. Paralyst has done a fantastic job, even if it wasn't through the means of a gank. To get the Syndra back in the fold of things, was down a lot of CS for a bit of time by able to steal away the blue buff and then donate his own to the Syndra. Has really allowed him to be a powerhouse now, sitting at 3-0-2. Oh, these wow. hooks don't land. Sorry, these hooks don't miss. I don't <laughs> land my statements. I tell you what, Trash, I'm never judging you again. No, this uh, this Blitz is for sure MVP of the game is below Ooh, one. That's a beautiful flash to dodge out that one. How long could he live under this tower? Artek, beautifully orchestrated. I'm not sure he's safe yet though. Swimming is on the way, as is Prelus down the river. They are on the hunt. Both have flash, both are chasing. Looks like they'll get to the safety of their tower. Prelus realizes he's stuck on a ward. He's going to choose to clear that pink instead of the hero dive. Nice little dive there. You know, picking up the kill on the Lucian, pretty important. Um, weren't able to drop the Herald afterwards, unfortunately, because they were so low and that rotation was coming yep. from the mid lane. But uh, for me, MVP of this game has to be Trashley. He's roamed mid so many times, created so much pressure. He was also the one that uh, he landed that hook early on Bass at the Golems to uh, set the Elise behind. So yep. He's not the missing his hooks. The robot with the fist, the God Hand, putting in work. Here he goes again. Maybe Why not? For another franchise movie. He wants to become Thanos 2.0. Not going to happen today. Lived just outside hook range there. He survives once more. Okay, Rift Herald dropped on the top side. Trading for that bottom tower. But he's going to get some extra gold there. We'll see whether or not they go for two charges as Elise is moving down the river towards mid lane. There's no one to respond, only beats at this stage belong. Maybe can path on through, but it's going to be risky through this jungle. Second headbutt will come on out, and I think that's a good identification, really, of who we can try and get online. And, you know, Kwaku, in that 1v4 situation, yes, if he has members, might be a different story. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those games where uh, experience is going to mean a lot, I think. Um, if Mammoth have the wherewithal to realize that they're actually not that far behind, I think they can play in a way which sets them up well for the late game. Sure. They for sure still have uh, a very strong team fighting comp. And when you press tab and you see the score is 7-3, to three, you know, it can be quite uh, daunting, particularly as a new player, you know. You're not used to playing competitive, play mostly solo queue where you never really know what the gold lead is, except for the kills. And you, you know, you press tab, you see that 4-0 Syndra, 1-0-3 Renekton, and you think, ah, oh, man, it's we're so over. far behind. Sure. It's going to be really difficult. Let's start giving up objective. Let's stop contesting. But, uh, you know, when they review this game and they realize that, you know, at 13 minutes, they were really only 900 gold behind. They for sure can contest uh, at least this next dragon. And for sure, if they don't lose too many towers, they can team fight in the mid to late game. Jungle's even. We'll have and to Bowman's see, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we'll have to see whether or not they recognize that or, or whether they're, you know, content to give up a few objectives. Well, the next objective that will be spawning will be a Drake in three minutes. There's going to be a bit of a lot of action for contesting neutrals, so it's going to be up to wave management and vision control. As you see on your screen now, Trash looks to assert some of that, specifically around the entrance towards Top River. Yeah, Harold isn't too far away. Maybe 30 seconds or so, Sinel the Herald spawns, and we'll see whether or not Gravitas opt into trying to secure that. You can see that they're placing their vision on the top side. Prelis is playing towards Sui Men in that top lane, getting the shove out. But uh, Mammoth doing the same thing as well. They've sent Kweku to match Beats in the bottom lane. Could very easily see a team fight here in a moment. Prelis on the hunt. Decides to go away. The ball would have spotted him regardless. 
That's going to be a little bit of a battle to see who can assert dominance with these control wards. Aggression is going to take place. Any. Now, if this works right now for Beats in a solo exchange, this will be fantastic. Both burn flash. Both burn ultimates. But the Crocodile comes out on top. Not sure what happened there. I mean, Kweku's ult is also on cooldown. So he obviously used it. Uh, we didn't see uh, the W come out either, even though he had full grit. That's a blade of the Rune King rush as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 not meta meta in the sense that everybody is doing it, but certainly, um, uh, I think on Reddit a little while ago there was a, a big post. Okay, here we see that solo kill. Goku's just oh, there it is. Okay, wastes his W on the wave and Beats knows immediately that that means he cannot win this all in and heads up play from Beats. Just sits in that bush, picks up the solo kill. Patience, preparation, and the payout doing work here for the Gravy Boys, as they now allow that to mean they can pick up a second Rift Herald. Yep. One in their arsenal now, one they can use to try and break open this map and um, look to build on this gold lead, which, as you say, was 900 gold, only slightly buffed up from that, but still, Mammoth are in with a shot here. Yeah, well, uh, the Herald did fall while we were watching that replay, so uh, Prelus has picked himself up that Herald, which means there is the opportunity to uh, to break a tower or to perhaps use some pressure from the Herald mm -hmm. to open up that Dragon Pit. Uh, we've got 40 seconds until the drag spawns. So uh, expect to see Gravitas moving into that bot side river. You can see that beats his top lane, whereas Kweku has committed to the bot side. Hoping to get some tower damage down. Elise is still roaming around the map right now, trying to find some form of influence. What would you be looking to do as an Elise in this situation from your experience? Right now, there's not much she can do. Uh, Oriana walks top to help uh, to try and shove that wave out in time for Dragon, but uh, has decided she couldn't actually reach the wave before Drag spawn. So instead of TPing, she's just going to walk down. Harold gets dropped. That's probably going to be dead in one charge. Yep. It's mid tower down, and they're going to use this priority. Wait, Seaman's all in. Kweku's in trouble again. He is in trouble right now. The ultimate goes out and they get it a lot by that shield. The action takes place in bottom, but it also takes place in mid with the Herald dropped. If Kweku can survive here, he does have the teleport to get back to lane and the ultimate still available. I think that sidestep might have killed him. Yep. Tried to juke something, but it wasn't enough. The turret will fall down as well. A double prize achieved. Mammoth looking almost stunned. A deer in the headlights. Yeah. Kweku just caught out two times there. Caught out for the first time by Beats. Solo killed a second time by Suiman. You can see that they're getting some damage on this tower. Trashley's too low to threaten that hook. Liv just got his ball in a very precarious spot, but uh, they're happy to trade that for the Dragon and the bot tower. Gravitas still coming out ahead. It's going to be an Infernal Drake picked up here, so a fair, fair damage boost once the soul is achieved. No Eldles today. It's all been about the soul point, and they're on. But Prelis is definitely allowing his solo laners to get online here. Both Syndra and Renekton are huge. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the game, uh, you can look at Syndra's gold there. 8.5k, far and away the wealthiest person on this map. Um, she'll have a bit of a bounty on her as well, and it's one of those ones where Suiman will dictate the pace of this game for the next few minutes. But, like I said, Mammoth, their team fighting comp is very good. Yeah. They're only 2k behind. They're not that far down. And a strong set Oriana combo. You know, Syndra, yes, she has the flash. Yes, she has the cleanse. But once those two tools get burnt, she's a sitting duck. Haven't seen him Boma for a while. It's been a quiet game for him. But he's definitely been sitting under the radar, farming away, keeping that gold lead advantage over Belong. Working towards those big power spikes that can be achieved. Doesn't look like he's going to be opting for the rune. Goku's getting second. all in again, but Oriana's on her way. She is indeed. The slam dunk comes down, but Beats now popping that Dominus, looking for the 2v1. What can he find in this situation with well, Mercury? It's there with the life steal not online to do enough. Kweku will get a kill. This time, he's got a teammate. Takes another all in 1v1, but he says, hey, Liv, it's free money here if you can get here. Liv says, sure, buddy, I'm on my way. Picks up that kill. Suiman looks like he's going to take that top tower, but Kweku did take that bottom tower as well. So probably a trade, but uh, kill goes over to the side of 
Mammoth as well. Lived with a flank mid, but no ult means uh, they're probably not going to commit to anything. Boma trying to protect the choke. Puts down the turret. Good job here of zoning the members out from this bottom side of the jungle. Here comes Trashley. He's is on his way. He was popping towards the bot side, but then is considering, do I go and group on up? Quakey going for the full reset. Now going top side, catching that soak. Two level difference now <laughs> between the mid laners. Yeah, Suiman is uh, is huge for sure. 650 Gs against her name. The Syndra. Very ready to carry. If she can just get into a team fight. So far they've been playing the 1-3-1, one, one, which has been working. Uh, but if Suiman can uh, you know, get any sort of effective team fight off, if he, if he, if he can land any spells, he's going to do a lot of damage. Trashley's been a bit quiet the last five minutes. Not really fishing for hooks. Hasn't needed to. But uh, Gravitas was definitely looking a lot better when she was. Quake has now completed that Trinity Force. He's been hard at way farming. I mean, he was sitting on a Phage beforehand, so that's a massive amount of gold that he's just dumped into that item spike there. And it begs the question, you know, despite how far ahead this Syndra is, you keep highlighting and going back to the point of Mammoth of a fantastic team fighting composition. Do you think there's a a degree of paralysis on we don't want to force a team fight around maybe a risky Baron given what they have at their, uh, at their disposal. On the side of Gravitas? Well, what Mammoth can bring, especially now with Trinity Force coming online, are they feeling a little bit scared? You know, even Syndra being 5-0, and not wanting to force a fight. Oh, I mean, it's definitely not nice to play against a 5-0 Syndra, but I think for Mammoth, they're more than happy to just soak the farm. They're, uh, you know, once Orianna can finish some items, once Set, uh, you know, can get a little tankier, and, uh, Aphelios, you know, picks up a few items as well. Like I said, they're more than happy to just trade farm, wait for that, uh, you know, 25, 30 minute team fight. Sure. Um, whereas Gravitas, you know, not a terrible team fighting comp by any means, but certainly not as strong as the Oriana Blom. Dragon up in 45. You can see Gravitas setting up for it. Aggressive pinks, as well as a few uh, regular wards. In that bot side jungle, just waiting for uh, Beats to shove that bot lane out. Once he's done so, expect. Oh, hang on. This is interesting. This is, this is cheeky. This is incredibly cheeky they've right got now. No vision. They've been prepping these waves because they believe that Question Dragon marking. is the obvious option. They know it's happening. Baron How is low is the Baron? How quickly will they check? Trash, you got a pop control ward down. It was. Ooh. It was only about 6k. Not doing it quick enough. Spam pings go down with that dragon. I, I like the I like the option uh, the the play the, you know the opportunity to try and make something creative happen like that when you've got the ability to jump on through with the blast cone. Absolutely, I think uh, the one big mistake there. Well, it wasn't a big mistake. I, I very much like the idea as well. You know, they they knew they had the pink down. Yeah. They knew the gravitas were looking at that dragon. Uh, I think it was you know it was creative. It was cheeky. I like that thinking outside the box. Um, in a scenario like that, you want to make it as as, as difficult to guess as possible, you know? So you want only the absolutely necessary members on that Baron. So for me, you know, it's a three-man with uh, with Elise and the bot lane. Or, you know, you leave you leave Braum mid with the set and you just take the carries to the Baron. You want to give the illusion to the enemy team that, hey, you know, Oriana set is mid. You know, you know, we could be in a bush, ready to gank you. I mean, we're doing Baron, but we could be in a bush. Yeah. But when you only see the set and he's also not in the side lane, it's a bit like, well, something they're doing going something. On here. I don't know exactly what it is, but I can smell something. Would have been a fantastic ticket to get Mammoth back into this game. They've done a fantastic job, however, keeping this gold lead not from blowing out any further. I mean, they're definitely not out of this game. It's Gravitas been what been are slowly, you know, that you know, as objectives spawn, they are picking them up. They are working towards uh, that Dragon Soul, and I think that's that's the big win condition at the moment. That's the moment where Mammoth will probably have to say, okay, we need to commit to something now. But, uh, you know, it, it's been 2k pretty much the whole way, and yeah, you know, like I've said a number of times already, uh, you know, all they need is that one strong set Oriana, Braum Oriana combo. Braylus takes a lot of damage. He's going to burn his ultimate very early on there as both junglers go for the exchange. Would have been fantastic if a smite is removed. Set had the flank there, but uh, Oriana 
was in base, so they didn't want to commit. Gravitas. Uh-oh, someone's going to face check. They are indeed. It's going to be beats at least the charge. Let's keep our eyes on towards that Syndra. How much pressure can Suman put onto this board? How much damage can he get done? Right now, it's all about Lucian as he finds himself a double kill, and he dashes out to get amongst it. Triple kill gets picked up here by Gravitas. Bass disengages and Boma completely zoned from the fight. What an absolutely nutty hook from Trashley. For Once those again. who missed it, he just plucked Liv out of the middle of his team and they one-shot the Orianna. You know, this whole Mammoth team comp revolves around Ori being able to not only get the ult off, but to get a few spell rotations off during the team fight. There's a 6 and 0 oh Syndra. She has Ludens, she has Decap. When your mid laner is just dying first, you are never going to win a team fight. Let's watch this again. They're waiting for Ori. She wasn't there before, but now she's on her way. You can see she's at the back of the team fight. They're committing to the Elise. They know she's low. You can see beats flash forwards, but Rashley. Wow. The God Hand. Sees lived out of the corner of his eye, and he says, hey, wait a minute. You're not supposed to be standing there. You're supposed to be behind your front line. Just yoinks him. Scary times. Very scary times there, as Gravitas, uh, well, what was a 2k lead for the best part of 20 minutes is now suddenly becoming 5k and beyond. And the window for Mammoth to really mount a comeback is getting slimmer by the second. Soul point available in a minute 40. Well, I mean, that was the window, right? Uh, you know, they, they were willing to, to sack neutral objectives in order to soak farm, which they were doing very well. You know, we spoke about it a lot. They were maintaining that 2k gold lead waiting for that one team fight. Well, that was that one team fight. That was the team, you know, they engaged on the support and the jungler. Both of them survived. You want the enemy to engage on your Braum, you know? Yeah. Those are the team fights you're supposed to win. But uh, a micro uh, outplay, you know, by Gravitas, Trashly hits that monster hook and uh, yeah, that, that was Mammoth's opportunity. Gravitas proved too good. They've got this Baron now and it's, it's only gonna get more and more difficult. And it is indeed as mid is open. Now they work towards bot side. Is he looking for the god hook again? Doesn't decide to do it over the uh, over the wall that time because there's quite honestly no need. See, so slowly working those waves forward, trying to maintain vision control, trying to choke Mammoth out off the map, force them back into their base. They're going to siege two lanes at the same time. Trashley's probably going to fish. There it is, but doesn't land. He doesn't have vision over that wall. Yeah, control wood is down in their base, denying them from being able to see over the swan, so it gives them the ability to get the jump. Two cannons means they can just relax outside tower range. The cannons will take the tower eventually. So Eamon just threatening with his balls. Probably never say that again. I was just going to say, <laughs> that is a clip that's definitely going to be taken out of context. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but he said it for me. I don't mind. Maybe he's got some scary ones. Pro I don't know. Especially I don't want to know. Especially a Syndra. Syndra with balls. Yeah. Gender bend. Swiftly moving on. <laughs> Soul point. A third and final Drake. A lot of damage. This is the soul point. Let's do it. It's going to be the burn. Is that 18% bonus damage? No, 12. It's 4% now, right? They nerfed it. Mm -hmm. Really not that much. Anyway, soul point. They get that bonus damage on the uh, the active as well there, so probably makes up the, the, the percentage uh, nerfed on those infernos. Ashley sniffing around. Yeah, he's done eventually. That's one down. Baron out. They're going to reset. Five minutes on Elder. Probably three minutes on Baron. Turtle mode right now, really. Yeah, I mean, the upside here for Mammoth, despite being, you know, more and more gold down, is that they do finally have some item spikes. You know, Lived is on those two items. Yeah. Uh, Boma has three. So they've got completed items at least. There's a bit of combat power there. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> when you look across to the other side of the scoreboard, there's a couple items there too. It's rough for Emboma, right? Because he has been consistently ahead in CS. Yep. He's been sitting at 2-1 and one for the best part of the last 15 minutes. 
They, he played a good game. He's played Honestly. a fantastic game. Just unable to find, once again, those windows to really make something happen. Yeah. You know, they, they the game plan was there. You could see it. You know? Yeah. Soak farm. Don't play aggressive. You know, at least didn't work out early game. Okay, that's fine. We're just going to soak farm. We're going to wait for that team fight. And Bowman did a great job of uh, collecting as much CS as he could. Has a pretty strong lead uh, on top of Belong 1. But, uh, yeah, Gravitas just proved too good in that one team fight. They got skill checked and they lost. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, when you're waiting for that one moment and you're not able to capitalize, you know, you run out of moments. Thing is, though, Carl, but I'm terrified of the Syndra, not only because of what we said before, but because of what he now has in his pocket, which is two completed rod items, Spellbinder as well as the Rab Cap. And he has a stopwatch as well, so. The Rab Cap. Yeah, the big Rabby Cap. You're the first person who's ever said that. Well, that's what happens when new casters get amongst them. <laughs> Probably why I'll get purged. The rap cap. The rabby. Big rabby with the stopwatch as well, so baby Zonyas. Stop clock. Plenty of damage and plenty of survivability, even without the necessity for his team to back him up. Let's see how Trashly plays this one. Ooh. Those supers are a very far way down in the bottom lane. Yeah, difficult to pressure, no Baron. Uh, fair bit of uh, wave clear on the side of Mammoth. Yep. You know, no obvious neutrals to go for. Baron is spawning uh, within the next minute as Belong on. 1 playing aggro. He's absolutely just shredding Ooh. through. Plays the bot passive. Kwaku just gets hooked on in, goes for a slam dunk, but slams himself into an early grave. And that is the window that Gravitas say thank you because we couldn't see an entry, but now we find it. Yeah, just sort of forcing their way in there. Bass gets caught outside the base. Trashley lands another hook. 5v3. That's one in and down. They're going to try and clear all three before pushing the towers. Systematically destroying this mammoth base, going for the double supers and showing them the pressure Break. off these hooks, these damage abilities. As Aphelios tries to make something happen with the Moonlight Vigil, but he needs a front line to activate with. He's punching on. He's pushing him off. He's doing a lot. Makes you, have you think. To imagine if they had a 5v5. Yes. Makes you think, what could he have done? If, uh, if every fight didn't start with somebody dying. Yes. Gravitas moving towards that Baron now. Still 20 seconds on Artek, so it's going to be a difficult contest. A lot of creeps rushing into the base as well, so this looks way. like it'll probably be a freebie. This is uh, going to be a Baron pickup. Probably the final reset. And then the push to secure victory as supers flood the map from every angle on the rift. Only going to get hard to clear once that Baron buff comes out. In at 40 on Eldar, but you'd have to think, probably don't need it to end. No, not if, at all. Uh, if the last two minutes is anything to go by, they should probably just run it straight down. How do Mammoth play these last few moments out? Do they look to try and establish some vision around this Drake, or defensively towards their own base? Do they look for a bush party? Do they look for a pick to try and respond to what this Blitzcrank's been able to do? I mean, for Mammoth right now, I would say the only thing they can do is you keep Oriana set in the base, you commit the other three to this Elder, you just say, we're assuming they're not going to try and end. You commit them to the Elder, you have the other two TP, and you take one final team fight at the Baron, but, uh, uh, sorry, at the Elder. Yeah. But, you know, it requires a lot of foresight. It's a big gamble, assuming that they don't just have four people standing just outside of Vision mid lane, waiting for you to commit to Elder as the engage happens. They do indeed. They find the hook. Artek is deleted. He's gone. Kraku gets uh, just evaporated. There's no other way to describe it. Aphelios is doing damage, but it's not enough to find any pick at all. Braylis is golden, but he will secure the kill on towards Elise. That's a double kill for him to get him on the board. Omar, wait a minute. What can they do? Simon oh. survives. It's not enough, though. They get drawn in. The bait of that juicy, juicy shutdown. Members fall on down just like their base. And Gravitas will single-handedly destroy this Nexus and take down Mammoth. Gravitas too good. They leave the game ASAP. Uh, to not showing any respect to Mammoth. <laughs> uh, yes, Gravitas, uh, all the gravy boys there coming along for the ride. Strong win in the end. Strong win. I mean, uh, they were sort of racing against the clock, but uh, every time we asked the question, they answered. Yeah. And uh, in the end, not a close game. Not a close game at all. Uh, obviously, Syndra is the most apparent, obvious uh, sort of MVP, right? If yep. you look at it from a statistical standpoint, damage output, shutdown, all the rest of it, right? But 
a lot of that has to be facilitated by small micro decisions. The first for me had to be Prelius taking away the blue buff, then giving Suman the blue buff as well to actually allow that matchup to swing in his favor. He was down in CS, mind you, right? Oriana was, was clapping him. Oriana had a very good start to the lane. I think the first uh, five or six waves, um, you know, we, we, we watched a little bit where uh, I thought the Oriana was doing really, really well. But for me, the MVP has to be uh, the Blitzcrank, Trashley. I mean, she showed her face. I don't know if Trashley is a boy or a girl, but it's a guy. the person's name is Ashley or Trashley. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's a girl. Uh, okay. Anyway. Yeah. Played very well. Uh, he uh, pressured mid a ton. Um, landed a lot of really great hooks. Got some dives as well. Completely turned around that lane. I thought uh, he definitely was the MVP. I think the other big thing in that game was uh, that early golem kill where, again, Trashley uh, found the jungler. They managed to kill the Elise, and Elise from behind, you know, very, very difficult to play the game. Wasn't able to stick any early ganks. You know, she, yes, picked up a dragon, but then tried to go for the Rift Herald immediately afterwards, and I think they, they, lost, they, four. they lost four for one or something along those lines. Yeah. So, I don't know, a lot to learn there for Mammoth, but, uh, yeah, Gravitas, I thought, they played really, really well. A lot of pressure coming out of the support. Preyless doing the right thing, scaling into the mid game with the Echo, mm. and then uh, both Quick, uh, sorry, both uh, Beats and Sweeman taking their turn, solo killing Queku. It's a recipe for success. It is indeed, and I think, uh, really, we have to wonder, what is this recipe for formulating a five-man roster on Gravitas? You know, maybe Trashley gets the MVP today, but he won't be here next week. Yeah, like I said before, I, like I, I, I really don't know. Uh, obviously, I don't have any transparency maybe into how they operate. Maybe there's 10 boys on Discord and they're all just cheering along, and as soon as the pause happens, dead silence. <laughs> Could be. I mean, they are uh, playing from home today, so a little bit more difficult for the refs to uh, keep an eye on what's happening. But uh, no, I don't expect that there's 10 players in Discord. Um, look, I don't know uh, who will play. I think, yeah, on the side of Gravitas, um, I, like, I like the bot lane that's playing now. I think... I think Puma, that's the other A to carry. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Puma. I think between Puma and Belong One. He's had some big moments, like especially yeah. on the Vayne, for example. I like uh, I like Puma as a player. Belong One had a decent showing today. Um, but I think, yeah, for me, I think Trashley is a is a really strong support, had a really strong showing here. Um, I, I would keep him on the team. And then, uh, yeah, Puma, Belong One, I'm not sure which one I would choose. But, um, look, if, uh, if they can, you know, recreate that similar level of Plague and some of the other teams, maybe they can pick up a few more wins. Well, that does it for week two of week number, or oh, day two of week number eight. There we go. That's a bit of a tongue twister for you. But stick around. We got one final break and then NPL to follow. Feeling the heat? Grab a pineapple or pineberry frozen phantom mix at Macca's. With 36 flavours, it's the largest range in Australia. Grab one for only $1. A little goes a long way at Macca's. That rounds out uh, the evening. Oh, I need to move to the middle. You there can we, move wherever you want. There we want. go. Just own that couch, buddy. Uh, okay, so that's been, uh, that's been a full evening of League of Legends games. Obviously, Gravitas Mammoth rounding us out. Uh, Gravitas, I don't know whether it's Gravitas taking that decisively or Mammoth losing that decisively. I think Gravitas played pretty well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was... Mammoth did actually start quite decently in mm -hmm. the game, but then the second they start their support roaming, Trashley goes towards mid. Like the way that I see Gravitas in the past couple of weeks is Suman's going to do a lot of good stuff, and you need to support him to do that, and that's exactly how they approach this game. They put a Blitzcrank in support, and they say, you're a mid laner now, go get Suman fed. And then he threatened with his balls very aggressively and was able to win the game. It's a carbon special. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the results from this evening's games. Game number one, the biggest upset of them all, Avant yeah. taking down the Chiefs. 
No one saw that coming. Everyone uh, on Vart's side, very, very excited. Legacy winning against Order for Game 2. Dire Wolves beating PGG quite decisively for Game 3. And uh, Gravitas wiping the floor with Mammoth for Game 4. So, uh, yeah, I mean, look, there were some good games today. Chiefs vs. Avant is the one that will uh, stay with me. Yeah, absolutely. Chiefs vs. Avant was, without a doubt, the upset of the night. Uh, and it wasn't all blue side wins, even though that was what I was looking at in that. I was mm -hmm. racking my mind. I was like, who was on which side? It was actually blue, red, blue, red. So Yeah, because it's the left is the side they get to they pick get to the choose. Side. That's yeah. what, yeah, that's yeah. the... So apparently if you get to pick... That's where the the odd uh, the win rate odds go up for you. Uh, win rate odds for you as well. OPL Anime competition is extended until next Friday. Uh, we've already got in a fair few submissions, but given the uh, topsy turvy nature of the broadcast schedule over the last couple of days, we have extended the competition until uh, midnight Friday next week. You send in an OPL themed anime drawing of anything you want. The winners will get a Dark Star. Uh, skin from the Duckstar skin range, and if you don't have the champ the skin that you like, you get the champ as well. It's a pretty good deal. You can even get skins. that one. They're, They're good skins. They're good skins. That one just, they don't have eyes on them. You don't even need eyes, you're a star. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. Do stars have eyes? I don't know. Have we ever asked no, one? That's the stupidest <laughs> question we've ever asked. Uh, but what we do have for you is next week's games. Uh, next week is actually a uh, an impromptu super week. We're making up for the Broadcast that, of course, was uh, postponed last Saturday. So uh, we're going to have six games both Friday and Saturday. Friday night, you're going to see Pentanet.gg take on Avant for Game 1, Die Wolves versus Gravitas, Mammoth versus PGG, Order against Die Wolves, Mammoth, Legacy, and Order the Chiefs. So we've added in uh, two games from the ones that we've uh, missed from last Saturday, and then uh, from last Saturday and then next Saturday, the remaining two games will be played. So you get a you get a cheeky Super Week for you. Yeah, a lot of Super Weeks to be seen in the OPL this split. And of course, what isn't on there is we're doing a Super NPL, so we're playing five games. No, we're not. Absolutely. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> it's a 12-hour broadcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that should be exciting. That's when, uh, uh, after this coming week, then that's when all the teams will have played an equal amount of games. So finally, the standings will now uh, be correct and make sense, and we can really get an idea of, of where the table is sitting as we head into the final weeks of the split. It's all getting very exciting. Something else that is very exciting is the MPL. It's coming up very soon. A massive thank you uh, to you guys for watching the OPL. A massive thank you to McDonald's, our sponsor. Uh, thank you to Rusty. Your knowledge about animals is um, astounding, isn't it? Astoundingly <laughs> bad. Uh, thank you to Carbon for uh, the balls comment. Thank you to Skimmy just for being you, buddy. You, you make you are the light of my life in this broadcast studio. We're going to be back with the MPL in a moment, so please stick around. We're going to be doing some TFT. Apparently, you were saying. Uh, oh, they've been Carbon and Skimmy. They've been training for this. Yeah, immediately went home after last night's games and just hardcore solo Q TFT. Uh, to, be, to get ready for tonight. He's been playing on the phones all day, covered, strutting around, arms out. Come at me, bro. Uh, we will come at them. We're going to be in the MPL in a second, and we want you guys to play as well. So please start sending me messages in the league client so that I can invite you to those games. We'll see you in a second. Flash, that makes it quite disastrous. Spatial Fisher goes up, but Prelis is the first one to find the kill. Bass will survive for the meantime. Who's going to pick this one up as the Shockwave connects on only one member? Gravitas have the angle. Beats will look for the Flash Hack Dash, and he comes in with the scissor. He collapses, he destroys, what, and he executes. Only one kill here is found by Craig as he goes for the slam dunk. They are indeed, but it beats the lead the charge. Let's keep our eyes on towards that Sintra. How much pressure can Suman put onto this board? How much damage can he get done? Right now, it's all about Lucian as he finds himself a double kill and he dashes out to get amongst it. As Block on. 1 playing aggro, he's absolutely just shredding Ooh. through. Plays the bot passive. Kwaku just gets hooked on in, goes for the slam dunk, but slams himself into an early grave. They find the hook. Artek is deleted. He's gone. Kwaku gets uh, just evaporated. There's no other way to describe it. And Philios is doing damage, but it's not enough to find any pick at all. Braylis is golden. Members fall on down just like their base. And Gravitas will single handedly destroy this Nexus and take down Mammoth. Yeah.